Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And this is gonna be a real quick one since this comic, though, filled with crazy epic fights, demons from hell, and one moment that had to be really awkward afterwards. This comic is also a pretty short one, and I'm talking about 2003's JLA JSA Vice and Virtue. A fun crossover comic that had the recent incarnation of the JLA at the time team up with the rejuvenated JSA. Well, rejuvenated at the time, but you get the point. Now, how does this comic fare? Let's get started. Warning spoilers. Our story begins on Thanksgiving, where the JLA and JSA have decided to get together. The idea was apparently by Captain Marvel, Billy Batson to be clear here, and Mr. Terrific as a way to make the two groups closer together. Both Sewer Man and the OG Green Lantern Alan Scott think that this was a great idea, especially Sewer Man who says that this could be a way for the League to pay tribute to the JSA since they are a major inspiration for them. And the party itself is going pretty well. Everyone's having a good time. From Plastic Man trying to make Dr. Fate laugh, my favorite Green Lantern Kyle Rayner having an arm wrestling match with Wildcat, even Batman is smiling. And when Batman is smiling at your party, you know you nailed it. Unfortunately, they have to pause on the party for just a little bit as New God's villain Bedlam shows up at the UN. And though they make quick work of the villain, he unfortunately did create a series of massive tunnels which leads seven of the League members to go inside and fight off his forces. It looks like they succeed and get back to the party, but then things start to get weird, and the two teams start acting like characters from a DC Zack Snyder movie, starting with Batman and Mr. Terrific. Batman being quick to anger, while Terrific himself is acting incredibly prideful. Kyle starts to get green with envy as he tries to attack Alan Scott, claiming that he has time as Green Lantern, it's now his time to shine. And Power Girl forcing her tongue through Sewer Man's mouth. Okay, um, yeah, just pause for a moment. Uh, to be clear, at this point in the continuity, Power Girl is supposed to be like Atlantean or something. So yeah, they're not related, though the writer Jeff Johns would retcon it that yeah, she's technically still related to Cow. So yeah, this is creepy. Moving on from that, Billy is acting very gluttonous and trying to steal the power of Shazam from fellow member Black Adam. Plastic Man is acting all greedy and trying to steal. And finally, Dr. Fate is just so freaking lazy. And why are they acting like this? Well, Turns out that something happened within those caverns. Some that would lead those seven heroes to be possessed by the seven deadly sins. And of course, Power Girl's new statue has to look more sultry, despite the fact that the original Lust statue did not pose like that, but whatever, fan service. And as those seven raise hell on Earth, the rest of the team are scattered. They must find a way to both come together, save their friends, and figure out who is behind all of this. How does that turn out? Well, we're gonna have to read to find out. Besides Jeff Johns as writer, the comic was also co-written by David S. Goyer, who a lot of you might know as the writer for the first Blade movie, Batman Begins, the really underrated Dark City, Hellraiser 2022, along with helping out with the Netflix Sandman series. But he also did work on the JSA comics for a while, so he did understand the characters pretty well. And I feel like his style of writing did not clash with Jeff Johns's. So I really want to know whose idea was it to have Power Girl, like, whatever, I, I gotta get over that. Uh, but besides that, it did feel like a very solid crossover, and a really good jumping on point for new readers who might be interested in the JLA, or most likely the JSA, since they both have been showing up prominently in the Star Girl show, which such that got canceled, and the recent Black Adam movie. So if you really like that film, check this book out. Getting the characters, I'll be talking about the teams together for two reasons. One, there are a ton of heroes in this story on both the JLA side and the JSA side. The JLA heroes show off as a little bit more professional, more focused on the mission, but still showing that they do care for one another and are concerned for their teammates who are currently possessed. While the JSA are a bit old fashioned and it kind of shows in some of the tactics they make when they're facing on these threats. Also, since the JSA have a lot more new recruits like Stargirl, Mr. Terrific, and Billy Batson, they do have more moments of being a bit more impulsive while fighting the bad guys. This is done as a way to both show the difference between the team, but also show that sometimes they don't always work in sync. Again, something that is really well welcomed in a team-up story. As for the possessed heroes, it's kind of a mixed bag. On one hand, some of them are pretty interesting, like Kyle Rayner and Plastic Man being possessed by envy and greed, since this could be seen as Kyle really letting his insecurities take control over him, while Plastic Man, being a former criminal, is letting his more darker impulses take control again. But then you got Batman, who is just kind of pissed off and all around just acting like, like a standard evil Batman. Then you have Dr. Fate, which is kind of interesting to see 
him essentially just not caring and, and only really forced into action. Billy, though, is just kind of power hungry, which, yeah, that is one thing I thought was kind of weird. Why is Billy being affected by this? You'd think that the champion of the weird Shazam wouldn't be affected by one of the seven deadly sins. Mr. Terrific, eh, he's just kind of there as pride. And as I mentioned before, Power Girl just feels like fan service as she takes the sin of lust. Not the worst interpretation of the seven deadly sins, but eh, I can't say they're the best. Also, if any of you guys are hoping for me to make a reference to the Seven Deadly Sins anime, uh, yeah, sorry to break to you, I've never seen that show. I watched the Abridged series, but that's about it. And for the other characters like Lex, Despero, the main villain, and several other characters that make a cameo, are just kind of there, with the exception of Lex, who, who is mostly just used as a puppet for the evil force that's causing all this to happen, since at this time he was president of the United States. And as for the villain who's behind it all, again, I'll let you guys find out for yourselves, but I will say it was a character character that definitely needs to have more credit to them, and was pretty freaking creepy when they revealed themselves. The art was done by Carlos Pacheco, and all around, his art was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, there were some moments where characters like Superman looked a little bit off. Like, they kind of made Superman a little bit too chunky, and half the time it looks like he's squinting a lot. Like, I know that was kind of the style with the Fleischer cartoons, but I don't know, it just didn't really work here. He definitely nailed it with the Inhuman characters, though, like Plastic Man, Martian Manhunter, and several of the characters, like again, Despero, and some of the demons that the characters have to fight. And the ink by Jesus Marino is very captivating. Very colorful and kind of weirdly, uh, giving this Golden Age vibe. Like, I'm not entirely sure how, but it just really captured the Golden Age for me. On a whole, JLA and JSA, Vice and Virtue, is a pretty fun comic. Not the greatest, and again, some moments could have been removed, but if you are looking for a fun but quick read of the JLA and JSA while wanting to have a really kick-ass Thanksgiving, this is a story for you. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Right, Ash? Uh, Ash? Fuck off! I'm trying to play God of War here. Uh, okay. Well, next time, we're gonna cover a comic for the holiday season that's a little bit more happy. Later.